With the rosters being expanded, many are questioning why the Houston Astros have not added Marvin Gonzalez to their 28-man roster now. And a huge reason for that is because Marvin Gonzalez is not on the 40-man roster. So if you were to add him to the 28-man roster, you're going to have to take somebody off from the 40-man roster, which means you have to release the player. You have to designate a player for assignments. And when I said this, somebody suggested that we designate Brooks Rayleigh for assignments. Now, obviously, we don't want to designate him for assignment, but many, you know, want him to at least be in AAA. And that's honestly a really bad assessment, in my opinion. And here's why. We live in a new age of baseball where you don't have the simple statistics anymore. You have a lot more resources for free. One of them being FIP, Fielders Independent Pitching. This takes into account what a pitcher has control of, and basically every ball in play aside from home runs are taken out of this because if the ball is being put in play, that's a big part in, um, up to the shift and up to whoever his fielders are. So when you look at the FIP, the league average for FIP is 4.23 and really has a 3.39 FIP. That's not the best, but it's better than league average. You want a lower fifth when you pitch. So I'd say that's pretty good for Rayleigh. And one of my best stats, I think, is skill and attractive ERA. I meant to say favorite stats, but okay, let's go to best stats. And skill and attractive ERA is like fifth, except, you know, if Rayleigh's giving him hard contact, he needs to be punished for that, right? That should, that should like, account against him. And skill and attractive ERA takes into a lot of other things other than just what FIP does. Um, and it accounts for balls in play that are not home runs as well. And the league average for skill and attractive ERA is 4.14. Rayleigh has a 2.96 skill and attractive ERA. That's very, very good. I don't know if y'all know this, but skill and attractive ERA and FIP are supposed to be on an ERA scale. So if you look at a FIP or a skill and attractive ERA and you see that, you know, if, if you think of it as an actual ERA, you'd be like, oh, Okay, that's how I'm going to judge it. A 2.96 ERA is incredible. So, naturally, a 2.96 skill interactive ERA is also incredible. Um, this is my biggest point on why we should keep Rayleigh, but there's a lot of underlying numbers as well. Besides this, you know, we got to look at what kind of stuff he brings. This dude has one of the best spin in baseball today, even though the sticky stuff substances has been, you know, Crack down on? I don't know. Um, but when I want to see um, Rayleigh's skill, I also want to see what he's doing, what results he, is he getting. You know, his ERA shows results, but those aren't you know the best because luck does count into some of this. I want to see what kind of ground balls he gives up and what uh, how many times he gets a strikeout. So I'm gonna add his ground ball percentage and his strikeout percentage because a ground ball most of the time is. We contact. Like if you hit a ground ball pretty hard, good for you. But the fact that it's in the ground, it doesn't matter how hard you hit it. If it's in the ground and it's at a fielder, it's probably going to get fielded and you're probably going to be out. So I want to look at his ground ball percentage because that takes away the shift. You know, A shift really decides whether a ground ball is a hit or not. And I don't want that to go against Rayleigh because guess what? Rayleigh doesn't choose whether players shift or not. So I want to see his ground ball percentage because for the most part that tends to be an out and I want to see his strikeout percentage because for the most part that tends to be an out as well. You know, if he's too nasty and the ball gets away but he got the strikeout, he's going to have a run on first base but he got the strikeouts. And a strikeout is mainly up to a player's skill, you know. Um, sometimes the catcher is involved in it because he's calling the shots but for the most, most, most part of a strikeout, that's thanks to the pitcher, not the catcher. Um, Rayleigh has a 41.1 ground ball percentage and a 31.3 K percentage. When you add all this up, you get 72.4%. The league average ground ball percentage is 43%, which, you know, that goes to the league and not Rayleigh. So Rayleigh has been getting less ground balls than the rest of the league has, but that's fine because the league K percentage is 24.4, so Rayleigh basically demolishes the league average for K percentage. And when you add that up, you get 67.4. So Rayleigh's doing a lot more things that he needs to do to get out that than the league does. It's just that he is not being counting the results because, you know, 
a ground ball to the left side on a lefty, it's probably going to be a hit with the Astros shifting. The Astros are one of baseball's highest shifters. I think they're third in the most shifts. So a ground ball sometimes is going to bite them in the butt, you know? Um, and then let's look at how nasty his stuff is. His curveball has 7.1 extra inches above average than um, a horizontal break than the league average. Uh, okay, that sounded really weird. Let me backtrack a little. Brooks Reilly's curveball breaks horizontally 7.1 inches more than the league average curveball does. That's one of the best in the league. His slider, 8.5 inches more than a horizontal break than the league average. The issue is he's not getting as much vertical break. So that's why pitchers, I mean, hitters are, you know, putting some of these baseballs in play. But that's a lot of disgusting, disgusting, disgusting great um, breaking balls. And it's gotten a lot of great players. So, I mean, looking at all this, he, again, leads not leads, but he's in the top like five, ten percent in curveball and fastball spin. His curveball and slider has a ton of horizontal break. His FIP is good. His skill interactive ERA is very, very good. And when he's allowing contact, a lot of times it's a ground ball. Sometimes he's getting strikeouts, which is good. You know, that's not contact, but he's in control of his at bat most of the time. It's just he doesn't have much control about what happens after he throws the ball. So if you look at all this, Rayleigh has been very, very, very unlucky. He should not be DFA. That's outrageous of a statement. And well, that's an outrageous statement. I'm, it's, it's like 10 o'clock, so give me a break here. Um, and honestly, he should be on this MLB active roster. He should not be in AAA or anything. He deserves this spot. And once the luck kind of settles down, which it never really does, but assuming it would settle down, you got a very skilled player on your hand. He's not the luckiest of hit players, but he's one of the top skilled relievers in baseball. And he's just he's just waiting for the tide to finally roll his way. And you know, it wasn't gonna happen with Dylan Moore, because Dylan Moore is just really good. But eventually, hopefully, we could see more of what really can present with his skills than you know what the luck does. I'm a classic man.